Can anyone believe it is possible to lay down such a barrage of poisons on the surface of the earth without making it unfit for all life? They should not be called insecticides, but biocides. Pesticide storage has adversely affected the growth and reproduction of pheasants, ducks, and some other game birds also is a fact recently established. Dr. Buckley of the United States Fish and Wildlife Service. We have found a reduction in the number of eggs laid, a reduction of the fertility of the eggs that are laid, a reduction in the number that hatch from these which were fertile, a reduction in the number of viable chicks that are produced uh, from the eggs that do hatch, and lastly, an increased percentage of cripples among the uh, young which do hatch. In this case, uh, not only does it affect reproduction, but if you'll notice these pheasants here, this is a normal male pheasant. You can see the white band on the neck. This is a male pheasant whose diet included about 125 parts per million of one of the chlorinated hydrocarbons. This male has none of the normal plumage characteristics that you find in the normal male pheasant. Uh, this, you notice, has plumage which is typically that of the female. And one other thing I should point out on this too, uh, that is that the levels that do this are much below the level which will produce death. And this is true not alone of the insecticides, but also this is true of some of our common herbicides, uh, where at levels uh, as low as a fourth that necessary to kill will uh, adversely affect the ability to reproduce. Since the mid-1940s, over 200 basic chemicals have been created for use in killing insects, weeds, rodents, and other organisms described in the modern vernacular as pests and they are sold under several thousand different brand names. These sprays, dusts, and aerosols are now applied almost universally to farms, gardens, forests, and homes. What remains to be known about the effects of pesticides on birds and other wildlife? Dr. John Buckley, Director, United States Fish and Wildlife Research Center. Proportionally, we've, we've just barely made a dent in, uh, in this whole field of knowledge. Uh, we've examined something like 60 compounds out of the several hundred that are in common use. We've examined their effects on not many more than a dozen species, and yet there are well over a thousand species of birds alone, uh, well, birds and mammals that we're concerned with. There are many kinds of fish that we're concerned with, and yet it's only a few of these that we've looked at at all. In addition, we'd like to know the levels of, of residues of most of the common pesticides throughout the, the total environment. And we find them on birds, for example, taken from almost any place. And it's most unusual to find a fish sample from any place that doesn't contain a detectable residue. We need to know the rate at which uh, these are taken up, the rate at which they're eliminated, the length of time that they stay, the part of the organism that they affect, whether they, for example, we find concentrations of, of certain of these in, in the brain tissue, uh, in liver tissue, in the testes, uh, in the breast muscle, uh, just widely scattered uh, through the animal, uh, largely uh, tied up in the uh, fats of the animal uh, wherever they may be. Do you need to know then how these uh, concentrations affect these particular organs, the brain, the liver? Yes, we need to know the effects of these, these compounds on each of these organs or, the, conversely, the lack of effect. We need to know what, we need to answer the question, so what? when we find this material here. What does it mean? And this, uh, this I don't think we know well for any compound in any individual bird.